What's up guys and gals? Now in a previous video and a couple posts, we've mentioned that we really wanted to attempt tanning a cowhide. Well, the time has come. We've got a whole little setup here and look at that. This is folded up right now because we're going to be kneeling on this to do what's called fleshing. So we're essentially going to take some different types of scraping tools, lay this over this uh, half log here and the first step is to basically get all of the flesh off of this and down to just the uh, the membrane that is on the back side of the fur because obviously flesh that's still here fat anything like that will eventually rot so that's the first step before we even get to tanning and preserving and any of that so let's get into it Alright guys, so this has been quite a process and to be quite honest, we did not film much of this because we're kind of still trying to figure out exactly what we're doing. But what I can tell you is at this point, so this is clearly going to be a multi-day process for sure. The uh, first step, as I mentioned earlier, of fleshing it, which we had an assortment of tools including something called a draw knife. There is something called a fleshing knife, which... It's apparently quite hard to find, although while this ends up sitting, and I'll explain why there's all this, this is salt sitting on here, but um, while this sits and kind of stays preserved until next time we can uh, get working on this, I'm probably going to uh, take to Amazon and get a couple more tools. But, point being guys, we've been scraping and fleshing, as they call it, uh the excess meat and fat off of here down to the membrane and at this point it's getting later in the day so we're wrapping this up so we basically took a ton of salt uh, about 12 pounds eh, probably closer to 15 pounds of salt uh and put this all over here and at this point we're letting it sit so that the salt can draw liquid out and then we're going to fold it on top of itself, roll it up, and let it sit. The salt will keep it preserved until next time we uh, have some time to work on it, which will probably be over the weekend when we have a lot of time to actually uh, get going on this thing. So this is Saturday, and we had picked up the cowhide back on Wednesday. So it's been a few days. Now, unfortunately, outside, well, you can probably see out the window here, it's quite wet out. And that's not ideal for bringing the cowhide outside to work on it. So, in the meantime, Here she is. It is a she. We found the uh, ends of the udders. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we've got this thing just sitting in this tote here. And essentially what we did to preserve this so that it is fine in here is it uh, got completely covered in lots of salt. And then basically just folded up on itself and rolled up. And uh, I've got it sitting up off the ground. You can see, well, not the ground, but you can see these little grates here. So I've got a couple two by fours and it's sitting on these grates because with the salt, the salt will pull out moisture. And um, I had already, I already needed to do this once because I hadn't realized how much moisture this would pull out. So we actually had to take this thing outside, dump out all the, you know, nice bloody juices that it was it was just sitting in its own juices basically so we had to pull it out dump the juices out uh let excess juices run off of this resalt it refold it up roll it up and then uh in here is where she is but it's amazing how well the salt works because like by just looking at it and even by smell 
you would almost think that with all the days that we've had this thing that it might be smelling but it actually doesn't smell at all which is quite incredible but that's the latest so here we are guys we have now found the time on a Saturday with some decent weather to get some work done on this cow hide finally hopefully it is still good at our last time that we were able to do anything with this guy we were able to get some fleshing done but honestly the weather and just simply having time did not cooperate with us so this thing has been rolled up heavily heavily salted so hopefully that has preserved it well so we're gonna get into this thing and uh, get working on it Okay, so I'm basically just trying to attempt to get this thing kind of draped over this sawhorse. We screwed in that piece of wood here so we have a somewhat flat surface to do the fleshing on. Um, this here, I'm not really sure what caused this. Maybe it was just the way that it was rolled up, but this is sort of a piece of flesh slash skin it's kind of stuck bunched up so we're gonna see if we can work that out too and we're gonna kind of try to get flush in this thing and see how it goes this here is our flushing knife that we picked up from Amazon so it does come to a sharp point but it's not quote-unquote razor sharp uh, which is from what I just understand the ideal sort of edge that you want so we're just going to kind of work it like this and see what happens. Got a little meat on you. Well, that's not good. So, we did get this cow hide from getting a half cow from a local beef farm. Uh, for those of you up here in the Massachusetts area, we got it from uh, 
from a farm called Hastings Farm down in Suffield, Connecticut. Now, no matter where you live, honestly, it's a really good thing to consider, even if, uh, if you got the room in your house for a decent sized chest freezer, it's, uh, it's a great idea because you get quality, ideally grass-fed beef, stuff that you know hasn't been pumped full of hormones, antibiotics, or a bunch of jabs, all kinds of stuff like that. Our food system is, uh, well, more and more fragile. You know, we have all these complex supply chains to get much of our commercialized food from, or these huge, awful factory farms. So, if you can know your farmer and get quality stuff directly from the source and you know where it comes from, and ideally, if your farmer does regenerative agricultural practices, meaning their fertility comes from the way that they manage their land as opposed to from synthetic fertilizers. A lot of our synthetic fertilizers, especially the nitrogen fertilizers, come from Russia. And then a lot of our feed, such as buckwheat, is a big one, comes from Ukraine. And we all know what's going on over there right now, so it makes it that much harder to get feed and fertilizers and whatnot. But that's specifically pertaining to big industrialized agriculture. When you go small and local and know your farmer and know the practices they're doing, uh, you can be much more resilient to all that. That's a good thing. So this is another bit you guys can see. Is this is all folded up here like one of the other pieces. So before I can get flushing that, I have to see if I can work this out. Because otherwise, I'm going to risk puncturing the hide again. And I'd like to avoid puncturing the hide again. I already did that once. Oops. While I'm doing this here, you guys can really see the color difference here of where it's been fleshed versus not. This is basically right down to the membrane. All right guys, so this is going to conclude the first part of this video. Uh, we've been working on this all day, and uh, it's quite the tedious project. Uh, we got quite the mess to clean up now. But the next iteration of this video, this is going to be concluded. I'm not even gonna bother filming the rest of the flushing because you kind of get the point at this point, you know? So, we're gonna have this thing ready to go and then we will be putting it into the solution that will sit in for a few days. So, 
while before this chainsaw in the background gets ramping up i'm going to conclude this video make sure you guys like subscribe do all those things and we will see you on the next one so long